to accommodate... You've survived the lectures the and swallowed the theory. And that's why I said, sometimes you will go out of our sessions more confused than when you came in. On your teaching practice, you've coped with technological meltdown in the classroom. Just bear with me while we get the DVD working. You've navigated your way through the minefield of staff room etiquette. Normally the ones on the bottom are the ones that teachers have brought in. And you still want to be a teacher. So now it's crunch time. You need to get a job. As somebody who's always been in employment, at the idea of not having a job, not being able to get a job, is, is quite a daunting thought for me. This programme is packed with practical tips, from how to rehearse that interview to getting through an observed lesson. It could have been carnage, or it could have been really good, and as it happened, it worked quite well. Adele Holmes is a trainee RE teacher. Her placement school, Outwood Grange in Wakefield, runs a session for all its trainee teachers to help them land that all-important first post. And I'm hoping that the information I'm going to give you to you today is going to, going to help you get that job and make that interview process a little bit easier. My Head of Geography Vicky Simpson is closely involved with the school's recruitment and she's keen to pass on her knowledge. Turnover in terms of applying for a job, interviews, knowing whether you've been successful or not, is considerably quicker in education than it is in industry. Industry, it can take almost a month from start to finish. In teaching, it can be as little as two weeks from the date of the actual advert going in the TES to the actual um, recruitment of the suitable teacher. So you've got to act quick. Hello. Hello, Adele. Hi. Welcome to Oxford. Thank nice you. to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Welcome to Oxford. Yeah, Come on. Professor John Howson is an educational recruitment specialist who tracks the teacher's job market. Mm. He's agreed to run a one-to-one -one session with Adele to give her the best possible preparation for the job application process. I mean, it, the process really starts for September pretty soon after Christmas, mm. although the bulk of the jobs appear from Easter to the end of May. If you haven't had a lot of jobs to apply for, then it's sometimes worth looking at people who want teachers from Easter or even from half term, because if they don't get very many applications, they may well consider somebody who will start in September and decide that they'll get a supply teacher in for a month or so. I have signed up to the um, Times Educational Supplement and what they do is they email you on a regular basis with any sort of vacancies matching your ideals that, that you've categorised. The head of the department and the other teachers in the school will have intelligence about other schools in the area mm -hmm. and possibly about where other jobs might come up. Be proactive, be engaged, go the extra mile on school-based training, build yourself a reputation. Whilst many trainees might apply for work outside of where they work, many trainees are also applying for jobs within the authorities within which they work, and there are grapevines and there are networks. So build yourself a reputation, be engaged with the whole life of the school. There tend to be more newly qualified teachers in the south, and particularly in London, right. than there are in the north. And I would encourage you to spread the net wider if you're not being successful early on. This is probably the, the make or break part of your application is the letter of application. So when I'm looking at application forms, what are the pitfalls that I need to kind of be aware of and any kind of specific do's and don'ts that you think? A good strong statement, things that demonstrate your understanding of teaching, your understanding of the school, that you've done your homework, mm. that you haven't just sprayed lots of applications around. So the fact that you understand something about the nature of the context of where the school is situated, the, the type of pupils that are there, where this particular subject sits in terms of the profile of the school. You show what's been important to you in your course and what you're looking forward to be doing when you get the job. Be careful about your personal statement. It says something about you that's different. Everybody in their training has done planning and behaviour management and you will want to include those, but try and put a twist on it that will be very unique to you. 
the first sentence of the personal statement is critical because that's the bit that will probably decide whether they read any more. And the other thing you need to do is to get somebody to look at your application form every time because it's amazing how easy it is for everybody to miss their own mistakes. So, you've won a wonderful letter, you've done a wonderful um, application and you've got the phone call saying, well done, you've got an interview. Could be in two or three days time. It can be that quick. All right, so you don't necessarily always have a lot of time to prepare for your interview. The interview day will usually come in three parts. A tour of the school, an observed lesson and the interview itself. You are on interview all day. From the moment you walk into the school grounds to the moment you leave, there will be people watching. The walk around should help you decide if the school is right for you. Is this a place where I am going to feel comfortable if I'm offered a job here? And if I'm not, then how many compromises am I prepared to make? Next, most schools will want to observe you in action in the classroom. If you want to confer with the person next to you, that's all right, as long as the noise levels aren't too, too high. And then we're going to have a vote on who's going to win. So we'll give you a minute. I mean, in some cases, they will give you a topic, which is common to everybody, and ask you to teach a lesson on that. In other cases, they may ask you to teach something that you are comfortable with. And clearly, what you want to know is the age uh, and the, the experience of the children and pupils that you will be dealing with. Tracy Barker, an NQT at Eton Bank School in Cheshire, went through the recruitment process last year. We asked her to tell us about her big day and how she got through it. I did quite an interactive lesson, which could have gone one of two ways. It could have been carnage, or it could have been really good, and as it happened, it worked quite well. I was very careful to ensure that the children weren't involved in writing, because I didn't know whether they would have their exercise books, I didn't know who would need a pen, so I thought it, was, it would be, be easier if they were doing things that they could discuss. Why might I be showing you a picture of Martin Luther King? What has Martin Luther King got to do with our lesson on persuasive techniques? Was it, was it slave trade or something? To You're do very with that? close. It's to do with civil rights. It's to do yeah. with issues about racism. Aaron? Um, he fought for rights for black people. Excellent. What we're intent on doing is getting a, a chance of seeing both the subject knowledge side of things and how that's got across to students, but key to that is how they relate to students at this school. Does she do it the Eaton Bank way? And Tracy did that. She didn't do something rather pedestrian. She did something which was dynamic, involved group work, etc., etc., brought the kids together all in about 30 minutes. I'm going to pick out an example of how Martin Luther King is using these techniques. Fantastic. Finally, it's time for the interview itself. John's going to run a mock interview with Adele. The questions he's going to ask are typical. You'll need to be prepared to answer them. Don't be afraid to do a little bit of um, practicing with things like interviews. I used to go down to my local pub with my wife, um, have a couple of Coca-Colas, and. Uh, you know, interview each other. So then, why do you want to teach RE? Um, my background is sociology, psychology, um, which looks a lot at how people interact, the diversity that's apparent in life. And I had worked in the NHS. I got into teaching and found that I loved working with young people. I loved seeing those light bulbs go on in, in, in their kind of thought patterns when they actually got what I was teaching them. So what would you say are your strengths and weaknesses? I think sometimes classroom management in terms of using resource c can be an issue for me. But in terms of my strengths, I think the fact that I'm quite creative in my teaching as well. I do stick to what needs to be taught, but I like to do so in an innovative manner. Assuming we offer you the post, where do you see yourself in five years' time? I would see myself as definitely teaching for a minimum 
a minimum of three years because I think you do need to concentrate on that before you go any further. In the next two years, I think I'd like to take on maybe a more pastoral role alongside the teaching. I did have a lot of healthy schools and PSHE experience, so I think it would be nice to use those skills. The mini mock interviews over, so how did Adele perform? When you were asked about why you wanted to teach RE, mm -hmm. that's where there was an awful lot of the me in that. It was not quite about what are we doing it for the children's purpose. It was, you know, I'm doing this because I, you know, to put it crudely, I will feel great at the end of the yeah. day if I've seen a light bulb switch on. But is the light bulb not how I feel that's probably the most important there? When we talked about strengths and weaknesses, you started off with a weakness. I think that there is a good case for saying get the weakness out of the way. An even better way might be to start off with a strength, then do a weakness and then finish up with the strength. So it's a sort of the filling in the sandwich and hopefully people have paid less attention to it. Mm -hmm. This whole question about classroom management is so vital to the beginning teacher. There's a lot to be said for not bringing that up as a strength and weakness. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to plant a seed of doubt in somebody's mind in an interview that this is an area that you're worried about. I had the interview which I personally thought had gone really badly. They asked me a question on assessment for learning, which was just, it was, could, I could have given any number of answers and I was saying, which part do you mean? Okay, so I, was, I kind of had to clarify a number of things which I thought would, would kind of go against me, but seemed not to. Sometimes people answer the question they think they hear, right? and that can often be one that they've maybe prepared in advance or expected to get. Whereas uh, I can remember on at least one occasion, Tracy asked for clarification in the question. Now that wasn't to me a sign of somebody who didn't have the wit to understand it in the first place, but somebody who wanted then to unpick what we were asking and get to the heart of it and answer exactly what was being asked. If you apply for a job, then the school will assume that you're applying for it because you want it. Mm -hmm. If, however, when you get there, you discover that you really don't want the job, even though they're going to offer it to you, uh, the sensible thing is to say to the senior member of staff as early as possible, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to withdraw mm -hmm. because, and then you can give them the reason why. Unlike lots of commerce and industry and local right. government, you are offered the job on the day and you are expected to say there and then whether you will accept it and if you accept it you're not expected to pull out a week later because you found another one. Every interview that you do is an experience and you build on those experiences until you knock them dead in that, pla in that school that is perfect for you. I kind of think that you know looking for a job, a teaching job, it's kind of like looking for a partner because you've got criteria that, that you want the school to meet but equally they've got criteria that um, they will expect you to meet. You're in that school for 12 months, often longer, and actually that experience can really, really impact, I think, on who you become as a teacher and how you kind of develop as a professional. So I actually think that choosing the right school is really, really important. Given what I've said, and I've clearly been critical because we've been trying to deconstruct the interview, I'm delighted to say that if I was ahead looking for a teacher of RE, I would want to offer you the job even at this stage of your training. And I'm sure that by the end of term two, I would be even more certain that I'd want to offer you a job.